Ciao, everyone. Welcome to our You, Me, and Sicily chat. I'm Esther. I'm Alfred. Buona domenica. I hope you guys are having a great day no matter what day you're watching. We've got lots going on, right, Alfred? Tons. We have tons going on today, guys. <laughs> But with the all important pasta that we have to talk about, the cauliflower, uh, Prince Philip and his tie to Sicily, believe it or not, the latest situation with COVID vaccinations, and of course, what is Alfred drinking? Because everyone always wants to know what Alfred is drinking. First, you have to say, what are you, what are you, what are you smoking today? What are you this smoking is a lot different today? Than you normally do. What are you smoking today? Usually this, he does a Toscanella Rosso. What are you having? Today? This is what they call an OP. You know what that is? No. OP. It's an old Lawrence abbreviation. OP. Old people? No. Other <laughs> other people. Somebody other gave people. me a cigar. <laughs> Somebody gave me a great cigar. I think it was my friend Mike Watt. He also Somebody. gave me this nice styling shirt, shirt again. Nice shirt. And the reason I'm wearing my St. Francis hat. St. Francis hat. That's my alma mater. Of course, when I went to school back in way back when. You needed 4,000 in a heartbeat to get in there. If you were warm, they let you in. Now it's the prestigious University of New England, Orthopastic School, Medicine School. So I couldn't get in probably even as a janitor. But my sister Anna sent Gifted me St. Francis College hat. Me and Bill Dixon. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's. The two I might... lowest SAT scores in the history of the LSA, the SATs. You guys, look what I picked up in the market today. It like covers up the entire screen. It's a purple cauliflower. Two euro. That's two dollars and twenty cents. This will probably last us about four meals, right? And I'm going to make getting, it a different way, a Let's, different way. Usually we uh, roast it with a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper, even hot pepper flakes, or you like it boiled with a little olive oil at the end. But my mom reminded me of a great Hungarian recipe that you put breadcrumbs in there and bake it with a little bit of olive oil, right? And now we're going to try that and report back what you think of it. But usually in Hungary, you also have a little bit of a sour cream, but we're going to try ricotta, right? You know, I'll tell you, no, I'm going to try yogurt. 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 That's right. right. That's good. I want to say something to you. Okay. Yeah. I've been eating more cauliflower and more broccoli since mm -hmm. I've relocated to Sicily than I ever have in my life. Okay. It's good. It's and I don't you. recall in the United States of America, either cauliflower or broccoli tasting so good. scrumptious the way it is. And you yeah, know, people often ask me, does the purple cauliflower taste different than the white one? And they do have the white one available, by the way. They do. They taste a little bit different. So listen, so the I'm reason an equal we're opportunity eater, Esther. You've been eating super healthy. Uh, yeah. So here's what I want to uh, tell you guys that Alfred said had something very different today. I mean, this week, which was pasta con mudica. You guys know what that is? Pasta with breadcrumbs, and you put some anchovies in it. Did you say like, con? Cu. Sicilian dialect is cu. Italian? My grandmother it's used con. to make the pasta camudica. Ca. Not con, not cu. <laughs> Cas pasta. Now you made me forget. Pasta camudica. And how'd you make it? She, make it? she makes it the only way I let. I hate when I go to the restaurants and get. The pasta with the mudiga and the achugis the way they make it. It's all drowned. They have this newfangled way now of putting everything in a skillet, a little bit of water, doing, forget it. How'd you make it? All right. First, you have to toast the breadcrumbs, okay? You put them on a dry skillet. You toast them until they're golden brown. Golden brown. Two minutes, you take them out. Then you get a little bit of EVOO, no more than two tablespoons, maybe two and a half tablespoons, mm -hmm. And then you put in exactly <laughs> five anchovies per person. So I had it last night. No, Friday, Friday night. Friday right? night. Friday a night. Bit of olive oil. And then you get your fork. You put the phone, the, the, what do you call it? The, it's on medium. You get your fork and then you kind of go like this until the anchovies sure. kind of, they don't stir. They actually disintegrate into the oil. Okay. Then you shut it off. Then you count to 15 backwards <laughs> in Egyptian. Okay. Once you do that. Standing on one foot. 
on one foot, spitting wood and nickels. And then <laughs> what you do is you take the mixture and you pour it on top of the breadcrumbs and you stir it up pretty good. Now, the breadcrumbs do not get soaked. They just get a little bit of uh, stuff on them. And then finally, now, I had, usually people have with pasta con modiga and the chugi, pasta with the, the uh, breadcrumbs and the artichokes. Spaghetti. People usually have spaghetti. Yeah. I hate spaghetti with that, okay? My family was either a rigatoni or a penny with lines family because we used to get the fork and eat them one by one. Okay, it would take a long, long time. <laughs> so I had I had the penny with lines, cook it, bring it to what kind of a boil? The, the key idea is how angry to, boil. You bring the water to an angry boil first. That means a lot of bubbles, not a kind of little little tiny bub, a lot of bubbles. <laughs> then you put in the the coarse salt. And then you cook it. It's about eight minutes, right? Eight, yeah, eight, eight minutes. minutes. But you have to you taste it. it. You have to taste it. People who just use the timer, it's not a good idea. No, because you, atmospheric conditions can... In the real, water and the heat of the... You have so, to taste it. So then you take it out. I use, a, I, I use a strainer of one of those stainless steel strainers to take out my pasta. And I just get myself one bowl, a single bowl. And then I put the mixture on top of it, stir it up. And then... You have Kill leftovers, up. but the important thing is not to mix it together if you're going to have it leftover. Right. right. Leave the uh, so those breadcrumbs will last me, about three days. You know, this leads me to talk about breadcrumbs and Sicilian households. Do you guys have breadcrumbs and use breadcrumbs on everything here? I mean, literally, they put it on uh, breaded zucchini, melanzani, which is eggplant. There was a breaded calamari yesterday at. Um, at the supermarket, they have involtini, which is rolled meat, right? Uh, swordfish rolled meat, any kind of meat, chicken cutlets. I mean, they use uh, breadcrumbs just about for you everything. Know what? I, I want to know. I heard this I wanna, story, though. Guys. For a okay, okay. I want to know if you guys use breadcrumbs. What kind of breadcrumbs uh, do you use? Because some people also mix it up. They put a little bit of parsley, a little bit of um, right. uh, grated cheese, right. so all salt types and pepper. Of right. Salt and pepper. Right. Uh, we also use them when I make you your um, meatballs or meatloaf, like right. some breadcrumbs in there and a little bit of cheese. It's such a simple thing. Now, I read somewhere, or someone mentioned it on Facebook, that the reason people, Sicilian people, used to use breadcrumbs was because it's cheaper than cheese. I'm not sure about that. What do you think, Al? I think that that's, I think that that, I think that's wrong. I that's think that's wrong. baloney. That's, it's a a, good that's like a culinary myth okay a culinary baloney the fact of the matter is is every household and my grandmother had one and my mother had one had this device mm -hmm. that you kind of screwed onto your kitchen table okay and as the bread got stale during the week we have one of those my you, mom has you, one you, you you put the stale bread in there in the in the what do you call it the and oven you turn it like and then this. one of the kids you know it was usually me and my brother tommy we got to put the bread in and, to and turn it turn okay. it into make bread corn, my okay? hungarian grandmother had the same thing my mom it's at my mom's house so. my friend pete mistina has one of those still and at the italian kitchen in in lawrence when he was making his uh chicken cutlets he made the best chicken cutlets. Yeah. Why? Because everything was homemade, including the breadcrumbs. And what he did That's was he did he did a double dip. He used to put the breadcrumbs first, the chicken into the breadcrumbs first. Listen to this. Then into the egg, then back into the uh, breadcrumbs before he'd cook them. That was the secret of his phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. All right, let's say hello. We're going to talk about. Prince Philip, God rest his soul, uh, in just a minute. But let's say hello to Joe and soon Alicia is here. Joe. Jim Ingram, buongiorno. Jimmy, I hope you're feeling better, brother. Thomas Love you. Caton oh, Dr. Rosemary, thank you so much. Dr. Rosemary just gave us a super chat. Thank Buona you. Pasqua. Thank, thank you, Dr. Rosemary. We appreciate thank it. Thank you, Peter Schipoletti is Hi, Peter. here. Hey, by the way, did you guys see our new episode on Catania? We have a whole new series coming up. Uh, that we will be featuring all the provinces. So, I have more to say on that and just a little bit more. But not okay, right now. Joya right Russo, now I'm getting motivated. B and Don are here. Good morning. Pat Grilly. Hi, Pat. Hi, B. Hi, so Don. Nice to see. Oh, Maria is here. Maria. Okay. Pat says, My grandmother uh, put olive oil and Italian breadcrumbs with a bit 
of warm. Very good. A bit of what? Carolyn is here. Good morning. Wow, she got up early. She's from California. Hope you're feeling better. Hello from Staten Island. Uh, Andrew Parisi says, my wife surprised me with some homemade buttermilk pancakes for breakfast. No packaged stuff here. Did I mention this or did I put, after I strained the pasta, I put olive oil on the pasta before putting the breadcrumbs? I may have been so excited, but I don't think I said that. You strain <laughs> the pasta, then you put an EVOO on top of it, mix it up, and then you put the breadcrumbs. Okay. I, Julie says, I've heard that cauliflower steak is fantastic. I'll send you a recipe. Try Very it. Very good. Try it. I'm, listen, I'm up to, for trying all types of uh, recipes. Uh, bread crumbs from my family's bakery in Queens made from Italian bread. That's the best one, yeah. right? Chrissy, uh, Chris Leone from uh, the uh, olive, olive tree. And... Ciao, Chris Leone. Um, so we have a new olive tree grove uh, in the province of Enna Piazza Ad Merina. Um, so that's very exciting. That's now, if you guys are is, is if you guys are new around here, ciao, Esther and Alfred, and we have a whole channel on YouTube on videos for Sicily. So make sure you subscribe to this channel, and if you like this video, hit the like. Uh, what's next, province? He, oh, he's Palm, not warm. Thanks, Pat. Palm. Oh, listen, uh, I want those you new folks who who are just tuning in for the first time to know that. We're sitting on the deck of our home, okay? This is where we live. We live on the Achicatena Achitretza line overlooking the Ionian Sea. Uh, we've been here for quite a while. We're not people that just flew in and professed to be experts on Sicily. Wait, I'm going to just show you guys the view today. Beautiful day. I want to hear where you guys are watching from. We're here in Achicatena. Very clear, clear day. So go so ahead, Al. Let me finish, okay? So what I was saying is we have we usually do Sundays like we're doing today. Sometimes we do Saturdays when there's, if there's something coming up, like weather usually. But it's like you guys coming over to our house and having some coffee or a drink and just chit-chatting on Sunday. Like we used to do at my house. every After the 10 o'clock mass every Sunday, my mother would have all our friends over, and she'd always have two or three dozen donuts and would sit around. Mm -hmm. the table and we'd solve all the problems of the world that's so basically the that's, that's 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 a whole idea guys that, well, yeah that's a whole idea that we wanted to do with this except the setting is sicily and we happen to know a little bit about sicily and as we go through the programming that we're going to do we're going to talk a lot about it now again for you new folks we depend on um the contributions from the gofundme to do our programming for example we filmed enough to do set nine episodes on the nine provinces of Sicily. We just put one up two days ago. Take a look at it. That's the quality of work that we did for this one, and that's the quality of work we'll do for the other eight, which, by the way, are already in the can. I guess we're going to put them up every two weeks. Every two or three weeks, yeah. yeah every two weeks. And then <laughs> and then during the middle of that, we'll, do, we'll put in us funny – four-minute, five-minute, whimsical-type videos. But we appreciate you. Now, do you have a GoFundMe thing? We have there? a GoFundMe. And also, um, Dr. Rosemary, thank you for that super chat. So there's a lot of ways uh, to support this channel. So if, if you can help Zazzo. us out, we'd appreciate it. Mary, oh, Finally I made love it. David and Mary. I wear your T-shirt that Mary, Mary sent me, the Fred, I know, the Fred, Fred Flintstone, Flintstone. T-shirt. I wear it all the time. I read the newspaper. You know, she's a she's a writer. Yeah, for the Boston, the Boston newspaper. Uh, what's it called? Mary, uh, uh, Mary, is it the Boston Post? It's the gal from the North End. Great kid. She's a good Pam Dinaruda. We've got uh, people here from London too. Yeah, and, and Fred uh, McNeil. She is a very talented writer. Yeah, and her husband David. David's a special guy. If you're not friends with these two, you ought to be friends on Facebook. They're very funny on Facebook for sure. All right, so now who's um, this? Tim Tim. London. Tim Tim is from London. London. What's going Vienna. on over there with the with the with the? They're uh, doing really good with the vaccinations. No, I was going to ask about what's the general temp tenor with the death of sad, the uh, sad, sad day. But this is so interesting. So I have my Vienna. Google. I have my Natasha. Google uh, Gmail set. Uh, so I get notifications every time the word Sicily comes up in the news, and right after uh, the death of Prince Philip, I get all these emails. 
Prince Philip and his tie to Sicily. So of course I investigated and it turns out that in 1943, uh, during the allied invasions, he came here on a ship with the Royal Navy. Uh, the ship was named uh, Wallace. And what happened was that he was a young officer, naval officer, uh, and there was a firefight, there was a plane bombing the ship. And Philip thought really quickly about how he could divert their attention. And he built a wooden boat, small boat, put it out at sea, uh, put some kind of smoke signals on it. So it filled the whole air with uh, smoke and the flight uh, the airplane got diverted and did not bomb the ship, the Wallace. And he is to this day credited with saving the lives of those men and women. And I think he was only 21 years old. God bless his soul, 99 years old. Did you know he was the Prince of Denmark and Greece? As well? Yeah. I know with the Duke of Edinburgh, uh, I got to know when I watched that series on Netflix about, uh, you know, the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth, yeah. who have always liked. And I go, really got to respect him because it's really hard being a man. You know, he was from the Mont Montablon family, whose family also was very famous. The only thing is that they had, that family had Nazi connections, mm -hmm. Nazi uh, party connections. And at the beginning, he wanted, I guess, to name, uh, he wanted, instead of it to be called the House of Windsor, he wanted to be uh, after him, the House of Montablon. But Elizabeth says, no way, I can't do it. But that family was also a heroic family. Yeah. You kidding me? There was an assassination, I think. One of them, the, the chief guy, got assassinated uh, later on after the war, years after the war. But Philip was a stand-up and a credit, a credit to the royal family, in my view, just my yeah. view. Rest in peace. Uh, Nanette says, Grazie mille. I just cannot wait for your live videos. You make me so happy. God bless. You know what? Honestly, it's such an honor for us to bring you these videos every day. We feel like you guys are family. And as this YouTube uh, channel keeps growing, we feel like we're impacting a lot of people. So, grazie mille for that. You know what's really good, too? I get to drink my antique Romana brandy and a cigar. And Esther doesn't bug me for doing that on the show. So I will really, <laughs> really right, like bug you anyway. Okay, Ricardo, do you like uh, Puglia? I've Love never been. Puglia. I've never been. I've been to a Puglia. I think it, did you know that Puglia had, grows the most uh, olives in all of Italy? Yeah. yeah. They are they're in, in, they're Italy's largest producer. It is a magnificent, magnificent, green, lovely place i've been there we had producers when i was importing oil we got in a lot of our oil a lot of our olives from apulia we went there many times to see our producers but they also do a lot of citrus as well you know, yeah. they do oranges and mandarins and lemons and vegetables and god god kissed apulia besides sicily when he made italy that's well, my um, opinion i've always said that it's just a great great yeah. Uh, Helen says your videos are great, very informative, nice, short, and sweet. I watched them over and over. Thank, Thank you, you very yeah, Helen. much. We love you. Okay, hello from Joe and Michelle, and it's raining there. Uh, the other news that happened today, and I don't know if you guys have been following uh, the AstraZeneca issue. It's been a big deal here in Italy, and now in Sicily, it's reported that 80 out of 100 people, so 80% of the people said no to AstraZeneca. Now, if you guys were here last week, we mentioned that Alfred is scheduled to get his on April 20th. Uh, so we'll see. The other big issue is, is that they're running out of vaccines. They're running out of vaccines. The Catania hub here, not far from us, literally ran out overnight and they weren't able to administer. But on the flip side, the good news is Johnson & Johnson is slated to arrive in Italy on the 19th. Uh, there's so, so much, so so much, much stuff going on. going on about this vaccine here. First of all, earlier this week, the whole leadership of the health authorities, I think that happened last week. Two weeks ago, yeah. Yeah, they were, they were cooking the books. Now we find out that some of the upper echelon people uh, in Italian society or wherever you call it may have jumped the line to get shots. I mean... Yeah, that happens everywhere. Though. Probably happens in the States, too. I bet it does happen in the States. Uh, what's Mama cooking? Um, I Thank will you, change Thank that. Thank you, Viv. I will change that. So I, apparently I have it just to the GoFundMe page, not You, Me, and Sicily. It's called Anthology of Sicily, which is exactly what we're doing. Is We are Fix it. 
Mm -hmm. You need to fix it. I will, I will. Uh, and that's exactly what we're doing. We're zigzagging the island and bringing you stories of the people, places, history, culture, foods, festivals. All right, the other wait big a thing. Wait, wait a, a minute, wait a minute. I got something else to say. Well, let me finish. Okay, go ahead. The other big news that happened, and this has been going on, believe it or not, here for hundreds of years, even to the Roman times, they were trying, they've been trying to connect Calabria and Sicily with either a tunnel or a bridge. And it has come up again because we're getting a lot of recovery money uh, from the EU. And there's a lot of debate about where this money should go to, right? So economically, it would make great sense to connect Calabria to Sicily, easier to, um, you know, instead of taking the ferry, you just zoom over there. Uh, it would just physically feel more connected. But on the flip side, environmentalists are worried. Uh, they're also worried that the uh, current of the water could get um, too high. So that's the debate. What do you guys think? Do well, you wait a minute. think? Can wait I a second. Yes. Okay. I want to know what you guys think if they should build a bridge or a tunnel, tunnel connecting Calabria and Sicily. Well, they're not going to build anything because yesterday the Italian the Italian government zeroed the idea for this year. So you can forget about it for this well, year. Well, but it's not a dead issue. Okay, but it's a dead issue for this year and there's no money for this year. But here's what I know. There are, here's the other side of the story, okay? The theft and corruption that will go, that will take place after a few billion euro were thrown at Sicily both from the guys in Rome and the guys in Sicily and the contractors in Sicily would be sinful, okay? Plus the damn thing probably wouldn't get built in any case. Right. So that's one view. The other view is why why do we have to be why do we have to be connected to Italy? Didn't I'm curious. Is Sardinia you, connected to Italy? Is Hawaii the connected to the United States? What? I thought the other day you said it was I a good idea. I never said it was. I'm one of the few people in Sicily who are against the idea. I can see the economic development, but you want to know something? The straight is, is a 20 minute straight ride. It's three a, kilometers, so that's less than two piece miles. Piece of cake. If someone wants to our come neighbor, here, it's not, that, it's not that big of a deal. You know, our then, neighbor was so upset about this because he thinks it's economically would be key. Yeah, and I said, yeah. well, why do you think North Rome did that? I said, like this he said yep brava well that he could be down. one of the reasons yes that could be one of the reasons but the other reason is too you know we've dug our own grave quite a bit of times as the Sicilians mm -hmm. have okay with the mafia with uh, smuggling illicit drugs there's a whole plethora of re look at this what happened just this week have you heard this story this week this is yeah. just unbelievable in jello okay Jella. <laughs> oh, God. Let, let me tell you this story. this is true at the major uh, the major hospital in Jella. The Carbonari rested yesterday 16 people. They Including were, the chaplain. Can I finish my story? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Including the chaplain. <laughs> and uh, they were uh, cafeteria workers and cleaners in the cafeteria in this hospital. They were stealing food. Including, as she said, the chaplain. Now, wow, you're saying, but how much? How does 24,000 euro worth of uh, theft over 500 different thefts from hospital food destined to go to people in the hospital. So stop, okay? Do you know what if they were doing? They the were filling trash bags up uh, and they set up cameras right. so you could see them. So, they, so it looked like they're taking trash out instead of food. Now imagine a few billion euro put aside for a bridge. They're going to be like, We've died and gone to heaven. <laughs> what are you kidding me? They're going to pull up there with trucks to haul the cash away. So right now, I don't think the Sicilian people, the ones in authority. The ones in authority. The ones in authority who cook the books uh, with the COVID information, who steal food from Jella. I don't think they're deserving of a bridge. You know what they are deserving, though? Wow, you're a tough plank. They today. should be walking right. the plank All right. on awesome. a boat. That's what I. Yeah, uh, Christine Harrison, chat from beautiful sunny Sunday in Houston. Most people here have been vaccinated and ready to travel. Hope to see you guys soon. Yeah. All right, so uh, there was a Hi, question. Chris. There was a question here. About, I think about traveling. Uh, if I can find it. Oh. Marie says, uh, Al, are you, the chicken wasn't dipped in flour first, then egg, and then 
Yeah. No, I don't think that's the way Pete did it. I think Pete double breadcrumbed them. I really? could be wrong. Yeah, my mom was part of that's how Pete did it. Okay. But uh, people but use flour, flounder. When you cook flounder, right, very delicate fish, you drag it in flour. When you cook the egg, the zucchini plants, the top of the zucchini, you drag it in flour and then you lightly fry them. Uh, Mary Rose wants to know, do you know how I can get the Sicilian almond wine imported to have at my cafe? We can ha let's have that conversation offline. Would love to. No, uh, no, I'm not going to have that conversation. The offline. administrators you can buy need it. to snap out it. <laughs> Dr. Rosemary, thank you so much for uh, your let's go support. Back to her, okay? I want to know if Dr. Yeah. Rosemary has a specific topic that uh, you want us to talk about. Yes, Alfred. Okay, I want to get back to uh, Miss Canastrano. Okay, yeah. about what does she want? Almond wine. Yeah. Okay. The best thing for you to do is to find a uh, vineyard that makes it and have them ship it to you okay maybe esther could help you trying to find a vineyard that makes it actually you, that's a good one i do have a vineyard that makes okay. it but if you want to import it's going to cost you an arm and a leg the importing prices and the tariffs are right now through the roof not to mention a 1.19 percent conversion rate currency yeah. that's why italian wines aren't selling in the united states by the time they get there, they cannot compete with the Chilean wines, the South American that are wines. Much cheaper, yeah. They can't do it. They can't uh, do it. Pat says, "Forget the bridge. There's still a ferry between the Great That's what Texas I say, Pat. And mainland. Yeah. Whoops. Someone We're just threw outside. a bottle at us. No. <laughs> <laughs> the wind drew, knocked down a bottle. Uh, okay. I agree with hope, you, Pat. Uh, Thomas says, "Hoping to travel to Sicily mid September for three weeks." There was some someone else that should work, and I cannot work. find where it is that they were asking about traveling here. But uh, why don't you write me again? Anthony has says, "Living in Henderson, Nevada, my family is from Borghetto Vicari in Embageria." Hey, Anthony, we did an entire episode, the one before Catania. I'm going to put a a playlist, and it's called "Exploring Sicily," and Catania was the last one we uh, published, and the one before that was Bagheria. Okay, the question Joe also wants to know, why don't they build a tunnel since it's such a short distance? That's also been in the conversations, yeah. The last time the mafia was involved in the construction process was in the construction of the beautiful uh, Garibaldi Hotel in Catania, which was supposed to be state-of-the-art. State-of-the-art. It ended up being five years late and three times the budget. Right. But you know what the big problem was? People who pump, who uh, pour the concrete foundation, mixed, haha, <laughs> mixed way too much sand instead of concrete. And when the when the inspectors came to make sure that the building was safe for earthquakes, flunked it. So guess what happened? They had to tear the whole thing down and they had to start it again. Joe, wait oh, a minute, sorry, sorry, please. Sorry. Okay, how about windmills? Okay, they gave all this money for mill windmills. All right. And then what happened was the mafia get the, gets the hand on that. They were never connected. The windmills were never connected. So you want to know something? Until the problem of corruption. The cancer. The cancer, okay, is at least controlled. I'm not saying you go to eliminate it, but for, for heaven's sakes, you know, a little, yeah. take a little bit. I agree with you, Al. Okay, I agree take with you. a little bit. Listen, Joe, I, Joe and Sue, I agree with you 100%. Give the money to the people and the economy. Agree with you 100%. Right. This week, there were protests. Well, there's been a lot of protesters, but all over Italy, including here in Sicily and Catania, past couple of days where the restauranters are screaming, they want to uh, stay, they want to open up and... Rightfully so. They've been ignored and they're not getting the money that was promised to them by the government. So it's a big problem. Now, the other thing uh, having to do with the bridge issue is before you, they build this bridge or tunnel, they need to start fixing some of the bridges here that are existing and old, getting old and collapsing. And the streets. And the streets. And, I mean, and, and solve the garbage problem. How would you like to bring in tens of thousands of tourists over here and go through the streets of Palermo and see garbage on every other stupid street? Okay. Okay. Now, also, Clean sidewalks. your own house first, Sicily. Clean your own house. I agree with you 100%. Careful Thank with you, them. dear. Uh, should Sicily secede? No. Because as soon as the it. government pulls out, the mafia takes over. End of sentence. 
Plus, it's far too politically important, geographically, geopolitically important. Italy will never give yeah. it up. The raw materials alone that have yet to be developed in Sicily, especially off offshore, between the petrol, the uh, the gas, and the stuff, that'll never happen. The yeah. problem is, is the mindset of the Sicilian people. They've been screwed, blued, and tattooed for generations, okay? It's in, and I'm going to use the word our, it's in our DNA not to entrust the authorities, yeah. period. Whether it's in the here, whether it's in the United States, or whether it's in Timbuktu, because the authorities have always, always exploited and taken advantage of the people. Okay, just my opinion. Uh, Natasha says, do you think it would be possible to visit Sicily this summer? We were in 2018. Uh, I'm not sure. I got out of the business of prediction, but I will tell you this much. September, uh, looks, I say. I, we'll see. Late but September. it looks like uh, this is another piece of breaking news. So the province of Palermo is in the red zone starting today. And there's talk that oh, wow. all of Sicily until the 22nd or 24th of April. 12 days. So tw tw uh, two weeks. Uh, and uh -huh. depending on the numbers, Muzumeci, Nello Muzumeci, who's the president of the region, said he's thinking of putting us in red again. You like Muzumeci? Which is great. No. He's weak, huh? No. He's weak, no. right? He's a weak No, he he's should have. He, he said. He we said, don't need him. Wait a second. He said. He didn't know anything about the numbers being co uh, cooked, about the COVID numbers. I don't believe that. Sorry. I don't Please, believe huh? that. And the problem is, as soon as you get into a political office here in Sicily, as soon as you get into an office, everybody attacks you to get rid of you. It's, you know, Maria is 100% right. Is anyone in authority? Legit. Yeah. Answer, no. Ed Todd. Let me ask you this question. Is anybody in authority in the United States legit? Right. Answer again, no. So that's the, the whole case everywhere. Okay, listen, Ed Talk, thank you very much for your My donation view. to our GoFundMe. It thank turns you, right. out that right. Ed is half Sicilian and half Hungarian. How funny I is like, that? I love Hungary. I think Hung I'm dying to go there. I've never I know, been we there. Were, we were supposed, we're supposed to, to go, go there two year. years ago. Uh, what do you think of the vaccine passport? Very controversial here in the States, but I'm for it. If it means allowing people to travel. I like the idea. I think they're going to only have a passport in if they have it, the EU, only intra-EU, not to go across... Uh, not to go across uh, the pond or to any other countries because there's too much there's too much political resistance in a lot of countries for that. But as far as e they can call the shots, you see what's happening right now is in Italy and in France and in all the other mm, local capitals, they're getting their power sucked away like a big vacuum cleaner <sighs> by Brussels. Okay, the European Union Parliament. They set economic policy. They're making law that supersedes the laws of the countries. It's basically now like the United States of Europe that nobody really had envisioned uh, when it got put together 20, 30 years ago, whenever it is. And who's suffering the most are the weak sisters, okay, like Greece, Spain, Portugal, or Greece, Spain, us. Sicily, okay? We're suffering the worst here, yeah. okay? We get the, sh I want to say shit end of the stick because she won't let me say that, well, but we that's what we're getting. Up. We can't swear. That's not a swear. <laughs> that's a cucka. Cucka end of the stick, <laughs> all right? All right, Dr. Rosemary, can you help me uh, with a contact to set up an exchange program for nursing education between uh, Sicily and the United States? Dr. Rosemary, I will talk to some people, including Dr. Uh, Faraci, who we had on a few months ago. He can probably help us. Uh, I University of Catania is a wonderful medical school. You. Wonderful um, medical school. Uh, Helen says, uh, the ferries across the Messina Strait seem to be efficient. They yes, are. they are. A bridge might be convenient for trucks and supplies. They built a bridge connecting Prince Edward Island to Kent, and it can be done, right. You, know, um, you mean you're talking about like a like a transport bridge for like a two lane thing for trucks or whatever three lane thing? That's a different story than what they're talking about here. It won't, it won't get through in, the, in my view the foreseeable future. Uh, Joe Essioni wanted to know earlier it, why all the shut the uh, 
shut the lockdowns. It seems Italy makes progress, then lockdown again. It, it's been a whole year of lockdown. Yeah, you're telling us. Mute is it's been mute. it's been like it's been like a roller coaster every single month. We don't know if we're gonna be in red. Depends on the numbers. But the vaccinations <clears throat> need to speed up. And I believe with this new prime minister, he's only been in office since February, Draghi, mid, Draghi. mid February, Mario, Super Mario, as they call him here, Mario Draghi. He put a military uh, commander in charge of the COVID uh, department. So it seems to be moving a little bit more efficiently. But what they're having problems with, as I mentioned earlier, they're running out. Logistically, they're set. Like here in Sicily, there are certain hubs in each one of the provinces. There's a central place where they can mass vaccinate. The logistics are in place. The vaccines are not. The helpers That's are the in problem. place. The medical people are in place. There's no vaccine. There's no vaccine. And then when they give it, they want to shove it up your butt and say, well, you can have a choice of one, AstraZeneca. No Pfizer. No, no then no, when they get Pfizer, the Pfizer, no, it disappears it. in a day. Do. No, they do have the Pfizer. The Pfizer. No, but it's almost non-existent. Try to no, find me a not. shot. <laughs> okay, I'll take you to dinner. One shot. shot. I'll take you to dinner. Uh, but what they have done now, because uh, they're running out of vaccines, is they're telling the people on the front line, the nurses, the doctors, the uh, police officers who were in line to receive these, to halt this because they want to make sure that the elderly are. Listen, yesterday, now, your guy, what's his name? What's my name? The president what's of the freaking Mississippi, Muzumachi, said, it's your duty to get the AstraZeneca every- vaccine shot because if you don't, you it's- might die. It's your duty. He said Sounds like more. Mussolini, for Christ's sake. <laughs> okay. It's my duty? Um, no, it isn't. Okay. Wow. Bravo, didn't you, Alfred. Didn't you have a, a nice lunch? You're like, I'm fine. Uh, I want to she travel. I want, wait time. a second. I want to travel back. Around. I'm so dying to go travel back. Um, when I move to Sicily, will my SS be tasked? And if yes, how much? No. Okay, I'm going to answer that question. Okay. okay, your SS is tax, your Social Security is taxable in the United States on your no, returns yeah. there. Okay, in Italy, your pension is not taxed. However, if you have investment portfolio and you're making dividend income, that is taxed. However, the first 7,000 euro that you earn is exempt. So, you know, what you ought to do is when you come here and if you're making some money, you need to find. Contact me and have a great guy over here that goes all the way up to Rome. He's a tax accountant. Don't let him do both the American and your Italian accounts. Find your accountant in Italy. Find an accountant over there. And then that's it. Just be careful. That's all. Don't do it by yourself. Uh, do you think lockdowns are helping? So what? So look, now oh, let me a, let me ask you this, you okay? I'm yeah. Not it. So lockdowns happen if people follow the lockdowns. It just uh, scientifically makes sense, right? You don't come into contact with another person that has COVID. It works. Now, what happened in Palermo is that they went into a red zone really quickly and people were breaking rules. Uh, People were having parties. Uh, The police uh, fined in Abula, I think 16 kids gathered um, because they had some kind of a party over Easter. Uh, People are being fined 400 euro to 1,000. A pop. pop. Yeah. Um, in Palermo, also, this is so strange. You're not; a, they're not allowed to sell alcohol after 6 p.m. And the fear there is that if some of these shops do like a, a takeout, then the kids will take the drinks and gather in parks and villas and so forth. So, does it work if people follow it? It works, but the truth of the matter is that we can't live like this. The Sicily cannot sustain itself being locked down like this any longer. Look at Sardinia. That's Two weeks ago, very we were good bragging. point. Thank you. We were bragging that Sardinia was a white zone. Yesterday, it went red. Yeah, I think it's because of Easter. I think when the kids came home from the north, they weren't paying attention. They went out and they party. That's a big thing. Okay, it's, there's a lot of uh, Donner- pent up. Pent up. up demand. Thank you. Donald La Modella, grazie mille for that. Hi, super Donald, so, Donald where are you watching from? Let us know. I want to know an for today. everyone who's watching, where are you guys watching from? And if you're joining us late, I don't know if you saw this. I got to show this again because I'm looking at it and it's like so huge. Like purple cauliflower. 
which will be like the last one, I think. I don't know. But, but back I have to an the announcement lockdown. Wait, 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 uh, <laughs> Maria says uh, <laughs> the lockdown was effective in reducing number of cases, but it's it's not. It's more of control. Okay, now I'm going to talk. Listen, Go. we have Chrissy Leone here from Olive Tree Memorial. I want you to know something about Olive Tree Memorial. Every time someone purchases a tree there, two things happen. The first thing that happens is is that Christine from Olive Tree Memorial. Uh, donates a portion of that money to the Sicilian project, which enables us to do a lot of stuff. That's number one. And number two, what is number two? That's number one. If we you donate to the Sicilian project. Wait, do you want to no, name the groves? Go like this for one second. Do you want to name the Anna? Cefala Diana, that's a new one right, too. Okay. Montedoro, mm -hmm. and we're trying to get a grove in every province. Okay, good. But now, in the meantime, ahead. if you donate directly to the Sicilian Project, www.sicilianproject.com, a hundred bucks at tax deductible to five hundred one c three, I'll send you free of charge, like I have been, uh, my three <laughs> books. Okay, my three books. If you donate to us, go fund me now. 50 bucks, I'll do the same thing. So what we're trying to do is to keep the money from our groupings here and make it go around, go more than one place. That's what I was going to say. Okay, All sweetheart, right. good job. I'm watching you guys from New York. I love the show. Thank you, Donald. So Donald and everyone else who's new here, get that cigar out of my, oh my face. Uh, we come here to you every Saturday or Sunday, 4 p.m. Sicily time to keep you guys company, let you know what's happening here in Sicily, Italy. Talk about the foods, the festivals, right? All of the good things. And also on our channel, we have lots of other videos on Sicily. And if you're just joining us now, I just published one on Catania. When can I talk um, about either St. Francis or, or the CNN? Wait thing? a sec. Grazie mille. Dr. Rosemary, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's, would you do me a favor, Dr. Rosemary, please email me specifically. Um, where is she what from? Is she, I can't remember where she's from, Dr. but her family is from Chanchana in the province ah, okay. of Anna. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Dr. Rosemary. Rosemary, I cannot believe how many people have commented every time I post that video that they're from Chanchana. Incredible. Um, okay. Florida visiting Tampa this weekend, normally watching from home in New England, Florida. Yes, that's, she's one of our stalwarts, Alicia. Kidding. Any videos on Tarmina, Rosalie, there's at least three of them that I can think about. So last December, I did a little, like, maybe three-minute walking tour in Tarmina. Um, and, and again, it's in our playlist called Exploring Sicily, but I will put a link as well. Uh, but if you go to YouTube and search Tarmina, Yumi and Sicily, two other ones um, were published. And the one we did that is my favorite, you know, this walking one was, it was deserted, the shops were closed. It was sad, but you know, I took you around and showed you a little bit what was happening. It was but the sad, last, it, it was sad. sad. Yeah, it but the sad. last one, um, the best one that I think is we really went into the history and we took you through some hidden gems um, in Tarmina, right? We showed you places that usually tourists don't go. So can I talk sure, about? Can I talk now? Yeah, wait a sec. Let me read a couple more. Right, okay. um, uh, Jane Chow from Rotterdam, New York. I love all the information Jane? and opinions. Is that Jane? Jane? Jane. Nice to meet you, Jane. Thank you for tuning in. Appreciate uh, it. Look at that. Anthony says Sicily's 51st state, USA. How does that sound? You know, Anthony, can I answer that? Yeah, yeah. Good. Anthony. After the, the Second World War, there was actually an independence movement from Sicily, okay? And a guy, uh, what was his name from the, uh, um, Salvatore Giuliano, he was a local Giuliani. bandit. Giuliani. Giuliani. He actually wrote a letter to President Harry Truman representing them and saying, hey, look it, we offer you to be the 40, 49th state. At that time, it was 48 states. But, of course, it never happened because there's no way that Russia which was, you know, 
the Cold War was starting, or Italy would allow to do that. But if you ask the Sicilians, I'm not sure how they would vote today. Whether they they probably want to stay in Italy. Yeah. They would probably want to stay in. Italy. I have no doubt yeah. with that. I think that independence movement is like two percent has two percent parliamentary uh, support. That's it. Uh, Sherry says, watching from Loveland, Oregon. I just made pasta with cauliflower. Oh, that's good. That's Yum. great. That's um, good. It, Fred, a friend from Scotland, wants to know what Al is drinking. I'm drinking a, a delicious because I'm here. I'm, let I'm, me grab it. Okay, I'm having a, I'm having a, a nice uh, Cuban cigar today, actually. And this is uh, Vecchia Romana Brandy Black Label, which is very inexpensive. It's under twenty bucks. Can I have this a little bit more? And uh, it's a beautiful. And look at the beautiful glass he's drinking. Yeah, it's a it. it's a beautiful uh, a brandy to have when you're having a, a fine cigar. Like I don't have this with Tuscanello. I'll have it something else. I'm not not this. I'll have a cognac here, or I'll have a port. I'll have this every once in a while. I like to have a good cigar. Somebody actually sent me a message this week saying, "Hey, what are you cheap? You're smoking these these Tuscanello also." <laughs> no, I mean I have Cubans. I'm smoking one right now. Not that I like to brag about it, but. We can go to any tabacaria here and buy Cuban cigars. Uh, this one's about 11 euro right here. It's kind of a lot of money as opposed to a buck for Tos Toscanello. Uh, Joy is still waiting for the book. So, Joy. They were mailed. To, they, they were, were mailed. mailed. Okay. They were, now, where oh, does she live? Joya, where do you live? I can't remember. Um, I know hers went out Tuesday. Okay. Those big cigars <laughs> sting like a backup to it. Uh, Christine says, I just watched Hometown Tra Trap. Poked out talents and treasures video when you interviewed Al about the Sicilian seven years ago, the chemistry between the oh boy. So if you guys don't know, that's when everything started. Uh no, actually it started on your brother's radio show. She was where like I all walked. over me, me like finish. a cheap suit. Okay. She was like grabbing my knee. It was crazy. <laughs> So Hometown Talents and Treasures was a, a YouTube and TV show that I hosted back in the States. And then I met him in 2014. Holy smokers, Al. In 2014, and that's where you, me, and Sicily was born. We sat across from each other. I interviewed him about Sicily, about the books he's written, about the stories, and said, okay, he said to me, why don't you come to Sicily and do some videos? Because I'm a journalist. Uh, I've been in TV or it was on TV for many years. Why don't you come to Sicily and do six or seven episodes on Sicily and stay for a month? Five months later, and how many episodes later? I stayed that five months that first year, and now it's 2014. So 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. This is my eighth year here, incredibly. And we just published episode number 80. And these live chats don't even include in them. You know, I'm very, I, I give her the business all the time, okay? He because breaks my balls. I break her balls all the time. Thank you. See, you can say that. I can't say that. That's not a swear. I break, Esther, you know what balls are? Anyways, I, <laughs> I, I give her the business all the time, right? But in the final analysis, this programming that we do on Sicily, I would have been off practicing law doing something else because I have the attention span of a well-trained gnat. Okay, <laughs> I, I lose interest in stuff. I'll write a book. I'll write another book. I'll do something else. But she is tenacious. Okay, she is tenacious in the research that she does. You know, it takes her almost. It takes her two weeks to edit a single video, like that piece that we just put up. Two weeks. Okay, she's upstairs well, she's for eight so hours, ten hours. Edit writing a script. I mean, it's a tr now I'm going to talk about this, okay? And I don't care what you say. And before I do, I'm going to lower the volume when you're on mic. Can I just answer this question? <sighs> Did you do a video on Agrijato watching from St. Petersburg? So we had many videos yeah, from we did, the Dennis. province yeah. of Agrigento, uh, but on the town. I like on this film. Hmm? I like this. I like his hat. He's a handsome looking um, guy. If you go to the playlist Exploring Sicily, there's all the videos, uh, but not only on the um, city of Agrigento, but we did a bunch of them. Palma de Monticola. Um, I love a, we did a whole bunch of them. Come in on, the we, province. Didn't we also do? Didn't we do something? Wait a minute, we did something on the Valley of the Temples, didn't we? 
not a whole thing. All right, can I talk now? But the province of Hi, Sherry. Um, Dr. Rosemary is in Lakewood Ranch, Florida, my ancestral home. It's Chirami, excuse me, Chirami, not uh, Chianciana. Chiana. Okay. Excuse me. Chirami in the province of Vienna. Excuse me. Uh, okay, go ahead. All right. <clears throat> this is, uh, I don't want to say it's controversial, but I, I won't make it be controversial because I don't like controversy. <laughs> <laughs> I am what they call a pot stirrer. I always have been. And you either love me or you hate me. And right now it runs about 50-50, but I don't particularly care. But in any case, I got some great emails and text messages over the Stanley Tucci CNN piece. All right. So I'm going to respond to it right now. Well, okay. I want to know first if you guys <clears throat> write in the comments, did you guys watch it? And what did you guys think all about right. it? Can I finish now? Yeah, all but right, I want to hear you. what people have to say. First of all, I'm happy that CNN did the piece because any good, any spotlight of a positive nature focusing on Sicily will bring tourists here. We'll bring the uneducated Americans and people worldwide here to see this magnificent place. Even though I bitch about this place all the time, there's no other place in the world I'd like to be. Okay. Now, <clears throat> stylistically, okay, I have an issue, and not with Stanley Tucci because he's an, he's an Italian and he's an outstanding actor, but I have an issue with those who jet into uh, Sicily for a week with a camera crew <clears throat> and film. And basically, they either read for a script or else they're studying about the history on the plane right over. Okay. I think that most of Sicily, according to that Tucci piece, is still, um, as far as I'm concerned, undiscovered and the spotlight wasn't on it. So here's my, here's my offer to Stanley Tucci. I've been here nearly... 25 years, 24 years, that's just been here eight. Between the two of us, we have three decades, over three decades of living in Sicily as an American. I've been every place, maybe a couple of places I haven't gone, but I'll get around to doing them. Why don't you come back, Mr. Tucci, with your camera crew? Or if you don't have a camera crew, don't worry about it. We have one, okay? You could stay at my house for a week. <laughs> no, stay for two weeks, free. I won't charge you. And let's do a video together. Let's and I will show you places that'll make your hair grow back. Okay? <laughs> I'm serious. You want to show out. Sicily? You want to show the beauty of Sicily? It's not talking about the migrant issue. It's well, not. We, it, we it's say not. We didn't talk, watch. Yeah. We didn't watch it. It's we not. Didn't talk, watch can it. I finish, please? Yes. It's not ignoring it. historical gems like Taormina. Okay. If you want to come, Alfred Zappala. Dot com or www.yumiandsisley.com free. Okay. Come over here. Okay. And you can make the video and you can get all the credit. And you don't even have to give me credit on the lines or neither. Maybe Esther wants some. I know Esther. She's probably going to want a name on it. <laughs> come on down. Okay. That's all right. Uh, Rosalie, what type of tour uh, of Sicily would you suggest for young travelers aged 24 and 18? Rosalie, just so you know, normal times we do tours. We South do Excuse me, Al. Excuse Santa Cruz for Al, beaches. Al, can just I finish? Let me finish. Right, Let me ahead, finish. finish. Ah. So we do tours normally of Sicily. We have group tours and also private tours, and we can put tours together. So message me, and I'll be happy to help you. Sherry wants to know how long have you been together? Um, let's see. You answer that. <laughs> Wait a, a second. Long time. <laughs> uh, regarding Tucci, his video featured businesswoman, which is huge for Sicily. I agree. My mom watched it, and she said that uh, he featured a female wine vineyard wine owner. I have watch, featured we, we more know. Sicilian women. We have we done have pieces on Sicilian women. Freddy. I've written in my books about Sicilian women. He's Sicilian not, women he's, he's not, are equal to men in Sicily. Period. She's not saying anything bad about oh, you. Lady. And it's good. It's good. All right. So see Anne women are stronger lost. than men. We know one episode will show the heart of people, hospitality, and the beautiful towns of foods. I quote some of the best 
uh, he's ever tasted, he was intrigued. I believe he will return. And okay. he ought to get a hold of us here, Marie. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Maria says, wait a second, it's too many coming down. Uh, Maria says, I was disappointed in the episode about Sicily that Tucci shot. He has so much more beauty to show in history. So again, you guys, again, we didn't see it. These are just some things that people have uh, told us. We watched, we agree that we're glad that they did it, but we were disappointed in the Sicily one, no pastries at all. I mean, the truth be told, you can't do it in one hour or two hours or however long it was. We're in episode 80 and we're still not finished. So you can't do it in two hours. What did Gote say? Gote said to have, have to come to Italy and not seeing Sicily is like not seeing Italy at all. Okay. Because Sicily, how does the last sentence go? Uh, John says, uh, love the Tucci series and looking forward to more because he didn't s stay away from controversy and sanitize the challenges Italy is going through. General audience needs to see. I agree with you. And, my, and, you know, people that have talked to us about it that did like it said that that was a realistic, uh, that he did feature it. Um, I saw many ancient churches that house vintage paintings in despair and under the wrong conditions. Is there a conservation society that you're aware of? I'm sure there is. Not that, that we're aware of, no. They're probably broke. Uh, Ed says, <clears throat> Sicilian woman, I agree, Al. Proof is my mom, Josephine uh, Chiazza. Rest in peace. Women are the strength of Sicilian They're families. They're the backbone. End of sentence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. End of sentence. And even, and it's so interesting, uh, Dr. Rosemary, you were talking about um, women-owned businesses. There are not that many. There are few, and they are characters. They have strong women. One of the episodes that we did was in Memphis, um, and Eagle, Marilena, right there, Marilena, Marilena Barbera. Uh, she's one of the few um, vineyard owners here in Sicily. So I believe the name of that um, episode was Sicilian Wines. Uh, <clears throat> plus Sicily is rustic and pure and he did not show it like that. Well, you, you know what? what? It, that it's, it's rustic and pure and you're right, but there's so much to show. I mean, with, between all the provinces, all the food, all the, um, uh, beautiful outdoor, um, museums. And I'm talking <clears throat> about the ruins. It's tough to do in one hour. We, and you know, and he right. relied what I believe happened because um, I know a little bit of what goes into business when you go over there to another country and feature it, like I did in Singapore and India, is that you hire some locals to give you right. the background. So, Listen, here's what I know. We're doing nine episodes of eight minutes each, okay? And for the first one we just did, the Catania, Problems of Catania, we agonized over what to put in for those eight yeah. minutes. There's so much we left out, okay? Now, eight times nine minutes is 72 minutes, okay? We're going to end up doing three, one, by the time we put them all together and get them out there for you folks, we're going to backtrack, and then we're going to put them together as three one-hour episodes, something like this, okay? So you can watch them all, okay? But we're going to miss a lot of stuff. But leaving the province of Catania, if you watch this video, you're going to get a good idea of what the province of Catania is all about, okay? And as we, and that's our overriding theme. Do we hit the essence of that province? Because yeah. they're all different. All the provinces are different. And you know, the thing is that even after I finished, I was like, oh, Al, I should have included this. I should have included that. And oh, what about this? What about that? Not that you can't, you know, I can do an hour on the province of Catania. But that's that. Uh, Rosalie, I'm 200% Sicilian, born and raised in the U.S. We are Sicilian strong. Rosalie DiPietro is a famous Sicilian name, DiPietro. Look at Francesca, what a small business owner, right. And okay. look at Angela at, at Fruit Family. Um, Helen says, you are right. Alfred Sicily is beautiful and definitely worth visiting. I was pleasantly surprised and only scratch the surface, there's so much. So during our tours that we do on the West Coast and all, so on the East Coast, and we wanted to add one um, on the South West Coast, you can't see Sicily in 10 days. This is not a 10 day vacation place. 
This is more of you could spend a good month. In fact, a few years ago, our friends from Australia um, came. Remember those two women? And they spent an entire month here, and they went somewhere different every single day. I put together their itinerary. So there's just a lot. And, you know, I'm here how many years and I still haven't seen. And thanks to our ancestral home videos that we did, like, for instance, Dr. Rosemary, uh, Cherami, uh, Bagheria that we did and all the other ones, I'm able to see some places that I have never seen. And I continue to say, wow, right? What, what, what time was, were we in? And I was like, oh my God, Alfred, how come we never came here? How come I've never even heard of this town? So, so one of those small places, Malili. Malili. Malili in the province of Syracuse. South I would have Eternal's never hometown. have gone there. Uh, and uh, Fiorentino. Mayor uh, Fiorentino. Uh, yeah. Jim Fiorentini. Jim from, Fiorentino. Uh, I want to say one thing, though. The most important thing is the viewers, is you folks, is you people, people who. Uh, love Sicily, you people who uh, watch videos, you people who come here on holiday. Not everybody does that. Not 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 every of the 17 million uh, uh, people of Italian ancestry. The vast majority of them are of Sicilian an ancestry, and about 50 percent of them, they have forgotten where they where, from whence they came. So it's basically a smaller group, uh, maybe 10 million or 12 million people that really have a, a profound love from Sicily, but We've captured quite a bit of them. A lot of people love our work. I love to write about Sicily. God gave me a talent of painting pictures with words uh, as a writer. And I'll continue on, on writing. And now, thanks to Esther, she's been able to put a lot of our creative ideas uh, to visual stuff. Okay? So it's basically a labor of love. It's always been a labor of love. Don't yeah. you think so? Yeah. Look what time it is. Okay, it's time to go. Huh? So, wow. you guys, wow. thank you so much. Before you leave, make sure you subscribe Hi, to Peter. this channel. Peter Scapoletti. Uh, Peter, your wife friended you. me. I friended your wife this week. Joya, I plan on staying one month each year. That's yeah, not Joya, enough, though. Joya, yeah. send me your address. I want to double ch check that uh, it gets sent. If you don't get those books by the middle of next week, uh, let me know. I know my daughter mailed them last week, Monday or Tuesday. It takes about a week to get wherever you are, but I want to see where you're at, okay? All right, folks. Thank you so much for watching. We love oh, coming okay, to you. Christina. And we are we're say are you still gonna read the comments or we're saying goodbye? What are you doing? I just wanna know. <laughs> like 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 all I like right? to break break your balls. Every I can't once believe in a while. you say the word balls. I can't say the word balls. I said the word, you know, it's like crazy. All right, but in guys, any case, I want you we to love you guys. We love you very much. We thank, thank you. Thank you. And we'll okay. see you next week on another Chicha. episode of Indian Sicily. Ciao. Ciao.